This is 7 National News and in our top story. An Emirates plane caught fire this afternoon on the runway of the Dubai International Airport while landing. Dubai Airports and Emirates Airports confirmed that Emirates Airline Flight EK521 was involved in an incident during landing at Dubai International at 12.45 p.m., adding that emergency response teams were activated and all passengers and crew were safely evacuated. All departure flights from Dubai International Airport were delayed as a result of the incident, with some inbound flights diverted to other regional airports. According to local reports, passengers at the airport reported on social media that the flight, carrying 275 passengers and crew, landed without landing gear and caught fire. Emirates Airline confirmed that an incident happened at 12.45 p.m. via Twitter, stating that the flight was travelling from Trivandrum International Airport in India to Dubai. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has directed the relevant authorities to invest 1 billion dirhams into projects and companies taking part in the Dubai Future Accelerators program. The Dubai Future Accelerators initiative is an ambitious program launched to advance research and development and entrepreneurship in strategically important sectors in the country and has been gaining international attention since its launch. Commenting on the announcement, His Excellency Mohammed Al Gagawi, the Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees and Managing Director of the Dubai Future Foundation, who is also the Chairman of Dubai Holding, stated that the investment serves to boost the program and increase the attractiveness of, of projects and emerging companies and serves to leverage the investment opportunities that will come out of the program, which is expected to be a major market for venture capital and an important venue for the world to invest in innovation. More than a quarter of private schools over in Abu Dhabi have been allowed to increase their tuition fees, with at least one by nearly 50%. The Abu Dhabi Education Council stated yesterday that 51 private schools out of 186 may raise their fees for the academic year starting next month, most by an average of 6%. The regulator added that it rejected applications by 39 other schools for failing to meet criteria. ADEC did not identify schools that successfully applied to raise fees, saying only that of the 90 schools that applied, 15 were Asian curriculum and 75 taught other curriculum. In Dubai, private schools have been permitted by the Knowledge and Human Development Authority to raise their fees between 3.1% for the low-performing schools and 6.4% for the outstanding schools for the coming year. Fines of up to 1,000 dirhams could be handed over to residents in Dubai's freehold communities for violations such as damage, the hiring of illegal domestic staff, as well as poor home maintenance. Penalties for 23 offences have been released as a part of community guidelines released by owners' associations to residents, that's according to local reports. The fines are listed in four categories. Under the first, residents face fines of 1,000 dirhams for abuse of community staff, hazardous activities, vandalism, short-term letting, illegal household staff and violations of terms against access control. Violations in the second category include damage or misuse of recreation areas such as playgrounds and swimming pools and can result in fines of 500 dirhams. In the third category, no fines are issued but violations of parking rules, road safety and the use of commercial vehicles are referred to local authorities who could issue penalties. Poor maintenance of gardens, improper home maintenance, unauthorised exterior alterations, the misuse of patios and balconies and inadequate pest control can also lead to fines of 1,000 dirhams under the fourth category. According to the CEO of the Real Estate Regulatory Agency, which is the regulatory arm of the Dubai Land Department, the Owners Association is the administrative party that represents the link between the owners and rele relevant government departments, suppliers and the main developer of the building. 
adding that they are responsible for the management operation, maintenance and repair of common areas in the building and must, for this purpose, maintain the property from any damage or harm. As many as 6,000 cars abandoned by their owners have been confiscated during the first half of the year. That's according to the Sharjah municipality. Most of the cars belong to residents who have left the country for the summer and were found either parked in unauthorised areas or covered by clothes in public streets. The Sharjah civic body has intensified inspections of abandoned and dusty cars with the approach of summer in an effort to improve the visual image of the city and to avoid creating congestion in a number of areas. Officials from the municipality were quoted saying that at first they will put a warning sticker on cars that are marked for impoundment. If the vehicle is not attended to, it will then be removed within 24 hours if it's parked on the main road, in 48 hours if parked in commercial and industrial areas, and 72 hours if parked in residential areas. Cars that don't have number plates are immediately confiscated, as they are in many cases found to be used as shelter for criminal and illegal activities. In 2015, the Sharjah municipality issued 30,000 warning notices and impounded 10,000 cars, whereas in 2014 only 6,500 cars were impounded. Car owners who have found their cars to be impounded are urged to go to the customer service centre of the municipality in industrial area number five with all the necessary documents which include a national ID, car registration card and violation ticket and they must also pay the fine. As the UA Telecom Regulatory Authority has clarified that there are no restrictions on the legal usage of virtual private networks or VPNs in the UAE, experts in IT security have highlighted the potential risks involved if individuals and companies end up misusing the technology. Talking about how VPNs work in real life, experts in the Dubai-based IT software securities firm Trend Micro stated that VPNs work like secret tunnels, allowing companies and individuals to access the internet without exposing their private information to those involved in hacking. Adding that a VPN creates an extra layer of security and privacy protection on communication. Security experts highlighted that this technology can especially help when people are browsing the web using a public Wi-Fi hotspot at a coffee shop, in a hotel or other public places. While offering advice to individuals and companies about when VPN usage can become illegal, experts reveal that users can be held accountable if the technology is being misused in instances while accessing and using gambling services, accessing illegal material and watching or listening to content that is not licensed for use or consistent with the UA's laws. While the updated laws regarding VPN usage in the UA will not affect legitimate users of a virtual private network, anyone using a VPN or proxy server in the UA to commit or prevent the discovery of a crime can be imprisoned and or fined between 500,000 and 2 million dirhams. VPN is a virtual private network. What does this mean? Uh, this means that you can uh, establish your own private network over public infrastructure. Uh, how does VPN work? VPN is basically, um, uh, you can look at it as a tunnel. So uh, you can send your data from one point to the other, encrypted, whether you can use, uh, and you use very sophisticated encryption technique to encrypt your data from point A to point B, from the client to the server. This encryption is a very sophisticated techniques that, is, that are being used. So a VPN uh, can be seen as an extra layer of security that's being added to, make sh to ensure that organization can transfer their data safely, especially if it's financial, if it's uh, uh, government sensitive information, etc. So you can look at it as uh, an extra layer of security where you can exchange your data privately over a public network. I think there was some confusion and uh, probably miscommunication from one of the uh, one or more of the uh, foreign news agency 
but it was for me it was very clear from the beginning dubai has always always been uh, the uh, the leaders in innovation and leaders in technology and uh, i think it's just they they understood the new, the the news wrong i, I remember that um, dubai was the one of the earliest being in cyber security uh, dubai was one of the earliest countries in the world that adapted the cyber security uh, crime laws and uh, that was basically the first law was in 2012 and then they passed the other law this year and i think it's the best thing that dubai have done that to stiffen the penalties on the people who are using the vpn for cyber crime and finally in the bulletin, if you have been to Karama lately, you may have noticed that a vibrant burst of colour has appeared in the form of a series of larger-than-life art murals along the full length of the district's 18B Street, often referred to as the Handbag Street by expats. The epic murals painted on the sides of accommodation buildings and above shop fronts are a part of an art beautification project commissioned by Wazzle Properties to transform the facades of the Karama shopping complex into an open street art gallery. The initiative aims to provide colourful and creative additions to the buildings, ensuring an enhanced shopping experience for the area's residents and tourists, as well as being a source of pride and inspiration. While it may seem like the art just appeared overnight, the pieces were actually created under the cloak of darkness during Ramadan by a group of prominent Malaysian artists, as well as a few passionate helpers. Wazzle Properties partnered up with street art specialists in the creation of the artworks on 24 walls across all 12 buildings and have just released a video online showing the behind-the-scenes efforts in bringing the project to life. UA-based Malaysian artist Nuba was one of the artists at the heart of the project, while other artists Katun, Pake Wan, Abdul Rashid and Sword One were also involved.